Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. There are many things that we all go through, and there's many things that can be used to help you heal through some of those things. Of course, modern medicine is one of them. There's also holistic healing for more natural approach. There's also something called energy healing arts. And it is an art with so many different modalities. And she practices many of them from, from hypnotherapy, past life regression, uh, on and on, mediumship, me, and so much more. We're going to talk with her today and learn more about that. Tatiana Mohovich is joining us here today on the program. How are you doing today? I'm great, Steve. Thanks. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. Good great. having you here. And there's a lot you do in helping people essentially heal from a trauma or traumas in their life. And we've talked about traumas here before, but I guess we should reset to explain what a trauma is because it's a very powerful word. When somebody hears that, they might think of a car accident or a passing of a loved one, but not necessarily. It could be something that maybe was smaller but turned into a bigger thing as life goes on, you become an adult, right? Yeah, I, I believe a trauma is basically a shock to the system. And it sort of um, rejigs your cells and, and your consciousness. And so you have to adapt to an imprint. How do you pick which modality to use to help somebody out? I basically consult with them first and we sort of um, intuit uh, what would be the best application towards um, how they want to approach it and release it or um, transform it. You practice hypnotherapy, and personally, that was a game changer in my life. And so many people are afraid to even go down the, the hypnotherapy road because they're afraid that a hypnotist can uh, control your mind, make you do things you don't want to do. I would love to dispel a lot of that there today. All of that's not true, right? Um, it's not true. In a way, everything is hypnotism because it requires a certain minute attention span to, to interact with it. And anything can mesmerize you. Um, and uh, hypnotism, uh, it basically relaxes your frontal thinking so that you are more sensory and um it is much more powerful to um, suggest things. But um, I also think Hollywood has um, played around with the uh, uh, sort of um, phenomenon of it as being something, you know, very uh, theatrical and, and feared. Um, when in fact, it's actually an incredibly powerful method of reprogramming your unconscious and your subconscious. And um, I think that's potentially very uh, profound and um, it could be threatening. Mm. I've, I've often heard that we're in a hypnotic state many times during the day, but we're, we're not aware. Like right before you go to sleep, right before you fall asleep, you're in a hypnotic state. You're driving down the road, we're going to work, and you turn around like, how did I get here? I don't remember driving here. <laughs> like, yeah, I zoned out. Yeah, if a car jammed on its brake in front of you, you would be fine. You'd stop your vehicle. It's all good. Um, but somehow you zoned into a hypnotic state. Is that re Did I hear that right, that you really are in those states of hypnotism? I do believe that you are in your imagination. Uh, and again, your subconscious, your imagination, uh, uh, you know, uh, going down a couple of gears is... Uh, you know, kind of a receptive state um, and and you're much more open to suggestion or to impressions. Um, so, yeah, I would agree. You know, I'm glad you said that, Tatiana, because that is really what's going on. Uh, and I'm going to try and I'm going to try and explain this for the, the the person that doesn't know hypnotherapy. You tell me if I'm right. So this is coming from a, a non-clinical, <laughs> non-expert view. But you help somebody basically give them the keys to their mind so that they can be more open to receiving suggestion to change their life. What is that suggestion? 
stopping smoking if that's your goal, losing weight if that's your goal, uh, not having a fear of getting on an airplane if that's your goal. You're helping somebody do that. However, somebody's not going to do something that they don't want to. So, for example, you can't turn around and say, all right, now that I've got you in this state, give me your social security number, uh, hand over your wallet. If I don't want to do that, I'm not doing that. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's physically impossible. Is that reasonable? What I, just the way I presented that? No, it's actually not reasonable. It can, in fact, occur. And again, it comes down to integrity. It comes down to um, you know being very resonant with anybody that you're going to allow to have access to that part of you. And it also needs to be assessed as to how it can of uh, this. Uh, process can be the most effective for that person. But you need to want to make the change. For example, somebody can't call you up and say, yeah, my husband smokes. I'm going to send him in there. You know, uh, he loves his smokes. Yeah, I got to get him to stop smoking. So I can't deal. I can't deal with it anymore. I'm going to send him in there. It's not going to work. He doesn't, if he doesn't want to stop, it's not going to work. Right. That's absolutely correct. Um, I mean, there's a chance that it could. And it, do, you know, again, it is a very uh, interesting, um, you know, kind of variance to what can happen. That's also the art of it. Um, you know, it is a mastery and you and there are folks who figure out certain codes. But the, again, going back to integrity and um, that person also um needs to know that they feel trust with you that they connect with you because it is a very uh vulnerable state to um access with somebody else and sometimes by yourself even hmm. you know i never thought of it that way you definitely are vul vulnerable when i did hypnotherapy and it was all virtual like we're doing here today i it got emotional you know went back to my childhood which is usually the the place you got to go because that's where a lot of things uh, may have happened. My childhood was fine. You know, just the stuff we all deal with. Um, but I got emotional. So I guess maybe be prepared for that. Let's move from hypnotherapy to past life regression. Now, many of us have a, a view of that using those words. Um, how would you explain it? So it is a uh, form of induction, which is... Um, uh, a, a term used for um, hypnotherapy or, or for it, it where you are prompted to uh, again relax your frontal thinking and and to become um, vulnerable to that zone out state to that uh, receptive relaxed state that you know very few of us actually go there that often um, you know, perhaps in our sleep. And, and so um, that will be a little bit more organized in that there will be um, something to visit and to explore uh, for that person personally through emotional and um, kinetic connection of um, the suggestion. So let's say that somebody has a phobia of lying then um, we would uh, prompt them to visit their earliest memory of that. And that becomes a whole beautiful process of its own that, uh, you know, the, the, the client goes through and um, often they experience these profound moments in real time and they release that experience and it changes the way that they conduct themselves gradually afterwards. So it's very profound and, 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 and speedy. Did you identify that you had past lives? I did. Yes. Um, deja vu was sort of um, a, a, a nudge or a clue for me that it was possible. Um, and uh, you know, there are other realms that we visit, and that we seem to have some kind of a recall in that does have significance to the way that we feel. So it's um, a really adventurous and curious experience. And I think it's just one of the most wonderful ways to uh, deal with anything that's very deep rooted. 
So you would say that a lot of what we deal with potentially nowadays, things that are limiting us, holding us back, came from a past life. Um, sometimes I think that there's probably other truths about that as well. <laughs> Um, you know, for the purpose of organizing and focusing and maximizing what you can do with, you know, a lot of this very esoteric approach, um, it's probably best to keep it simple. I, I want to share with you uh, and, and your feedback on, on, on a past life. I have an affinity for the 1800s. I don't know what it is. I love looking at photographs right when photography got going called the 1850s 60s around there i could look at pictures of 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 around that period of people's clothes and i'm fascinated like how did they even do that without you know today of course machines whatever i, I i'm very it, it just i i love the simpler way of life when there was a little bit of technology and i later learned this is actually uh, within the last uh year somebody traced back my uh, genealogy and it turns out that my father's father's father i believe came from lithuania didn't even know i was lithuanian ancestry.com confirmed that and he was a tailor and he would make clothes and he worked his butt off and he came from that country to new york city became a tailor there and uh w was able to buy a place and support his family and did fairly well um, that I found that after, you know, I talked about <laughs> loving that period and the clothes and just how they did it. It's not even just about the fashion. It's how they did it. Do you think that I may have been part of a past life in that period, just because it resonates so much with me? I, I, it makes sense to me. And maybe that's very simplistic. Maybe it's very, uh, far-fetched again, how to measure these things is, is, is the question. I, I, I would think that if you have a response, a very strong um, nervous system, sympathetic system response to the images or the evocations of the design or the sense of things, then very likely it's um, memorable for you in some way. Hmm. I, I don't know. <laughs> Time to book a session with Tatiana and let's go back. Um, how did this all happen for you? How did you go down this road of energy healing and, and all of these modalities? Well, I guess um, I was always drawn to the other side. Um, even as a, uh, a child, I was always just sort of fascinated with, uh, uh, you know, spirits and, and, and sort of the whole esoteric um, metaphysical reality of things. Um, but I was also drawn to many other things. So um, I kind of explored, uh, you know, different modalities. And then I began to realize that I was very um, aware and sensitive and um, helping people uh, is something that uh, is really happy for me and important to me. So um, out of all the different trails that I took, uh, this felt correct and uh, things kind of clicked into place um, once I gave up other aspirations that didn't seem to be as uh, consistent for me. And this just felt correct, and, it, and, and it's still correct, and I'm, I'm so grateful. Wow. You have also some mediumship ability, right? Clairvoyance yes. ability as well. Um, it's defined in many different ways. How would you define those abilities or gifts? Some, some call them that. So it's really amazing. There are so many different types of people and, uh, their, uh, particular signature of, uh, reading energy from where, what, why, how, um, and there, there are many terms for being a, a sensitive, um, you know, a psychic is someone that can predict a certain way uh, from your energy. A clairvoyant is someone who um, might see things more. Um, a clairaudient might hear things. A medium tends to connect with um, uh, those that have passed over and um, that particular uh, spectrum, light spectrum or lack of light spectrum. And um, that's a little bit more sensitive and it's a little bit more physical 
Um, and uh, what else is there? What other terms are there? And there are channelers and, and, you know, they also download information in a different way. It's more of a stream. Um, people read tea leaves, they read beans. I mean, there are so many ways to connect with, that kind of ex extrasensory information that can inform if it's done in the right way, it can really um, open up, open things up for people in a different way because they get to see something different about what they're going through. So that's what I would say about that. Hmm. I, do you see things? Do you hear things? Do you feel things? I definitely do. Um, not all the time. Um, some days are um, a little busier than others. And um, I think, not I think, but I know that um, being this sensitive, and a lot of us are, a lot of us are, uh, that it also goes in its own cycles. Sometimes it's, you know, very sharp. Sometimes it's a little, you know, slower or it wants to turn off. So, um yeah, it's a it's a very interesting adjunct. I want to talk about um, the workplace. Now, a lot goes on in the workplace. Uh, there's different personalities, different energies that we all need to deal with. Uh, and that's essentially what we're talking about here. Energy is everywhere. We're energy. I'm a certain vibration. You are uh, the chair we're sitting in. Another type of vibration. It's It, it harnesses energy. But certainly we spend so much time at work. Um, what do you think would improve the work environment in, in this in this culture at this point in time? So, well, a lot of the work environment is going home and working from home and interfacing with people on screens sure. or phones. So there, so 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 that's one thing. But I think you know, there's so much change going on around us. It's overwhelming for everybody on every level, and um, I think that some of the very um, primal things that we experience as humans. Um, can be agitated more because things are um, a lot more ambiguous, but also that, you know, there are some unhealed aspects as a, as a species that, um, you know, we struggle with, for example, um, you know, whether we're good enough mm. or. Um, Which by the way, that, my, I mean, to cut you off, but in, in our in our society, that's probably the number one thing. If you ask any coach, any therapist, we all walk around with one shape or form of feeling that we're, we're not good enough. And it basically comes from uh, childhood situations, right? Definitely, definitely. Or the way that we continue when we come into this carnation and that it's unfinished, uh, you know. Um, but yes, um, the... Uh, the protocol for, um, you know, this kind of stuff is, is you know, it's very intense. I mean, uh, we feel so intensely, uh, you know, around each other. And in a workplace, it's very competitive. It's very much about, um, you know, being thrown together with other people and trying to make it work because you have to and we're told to. And so there are a lot of things that occur, you know, uh, very intense feelings of, you um, uh, again, am I good enough? Uh, am I lovable? Mm -hmm. um, do I belong here? Um, but also, you know, edgier stuff like jealousy and, uh, you know, greed. Um, the Native Americans speak about how jealousy and greed are some of the most profoundly damaging um, aspirations or, or connections to have socially. And, um, you know, one... <laughs> some of these can be pretty lethal if they're not kept in check. And, uh, you know, I, 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 we're all doing our best here. This is not an easy place. Um, but I, I, I hope that, you know, these are things that uh, we can learn how to um, monitor in some way a little bit better. How does somebody work with you, Tatiana? Let's say they're, this is resonating. They, maybe they do know that they've got some stuff that they need to heal from. Maybe it's a past trauma they reach out to you and how does the whole process work? So again, we would assess what it is that they're interested in tackling. Um, and uh, we determine, uh, you know, what, 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 what speed, what direction, what outcome. And um, so then 
we would basically get right down to the nitty gritty and figure out what is triggering this person um, and are they more emotional? Are they more uh, cerebral? And what would be the most positive fit for encountering some of the stuff that they want to encounter? And um, so we would have a discussion and an interview and, uh, you know, just check in that uh, we're, we're a good fit. And then we would go from there. And uh, basically, um, the process um, is its own unique uh, unfoldment, and it's um, uh, personal to the client. Yeah, one size doesn't fit all. We all have different things we're going through. You identify right. what's going to work best. Uh, what's your website? Uh, it's artofdivinemystery.com. Interesting title. <laughs> Life is a mystery now, isn't it? It sure is. Do you feel, that being said, do you feel that... There is, there are no coincidences in life. Things are happening for a reason. Um, <laughs> I have uh, struggled with that one at times, but then eventually, yes, you know, I do believe that it does return to that philosophy. Yeah. And, and we may never know the answer, but then again, sometimes things happen and then you look back and you say, oh, well, if that didn't happen, then this wouldn't have happened. Then that wouldn't have happened. Um, it's fascinating. <laughs> it is a mystery for sure. Uh, wonderful talking with you. And uh, thanks for the details on the past life regression. All of this, by the way, can be done virtually, correct? Correct. Wonderful. Or by phone as well. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Tatiana, thanks for being here today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. We'll be right back. An adjustment to the spine of your emotions and the chamber of your heart and mind can be found at artofdivinemystery.com where you'll access deep insight through profound clairvoyant and mediumistic readings by Tatiana Mahowicz. Transformational hypnosis, past life regression, astrology, healing energy arts, and more. That's artofdivinemystery.com, six. Four seven eight nine nine five eight zero five. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, Dad, how do airplanes fly? What's in this box? Can I touch this? Where does sand come from? Is this tree good for climbing? What happens if I mix these two things together? How are babies made? What does this thing do? Kids are curious about everything, including guns. Talking to them about gun safety in your home is a good first step, but you can do more. Always keep your guns locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Storing your guns securely is the best way to prevent family fire, including unintentional shootings. For more information on safe gun storage and ways to keep your family safe, visit endfamilyfire.org. That's endfamilyfire.org. What do we keep in the attic? What's this thing called? Can I ride my bike backwards? Like I said, kids are curious. It's up to us to keep them safe. Brought to you by End Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council.